on parliamentary privilege if they so desire. We come now to oral questions. The first question is the name of the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And my question is to the Prime Minister. Does she stand by all her government's policies? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes. It's oh, good to know. Really? Speaker, from 1 July, will it be $10 cheaper for New Zealanders to visit their GP? Uh, Mr Speaker, I can confirm that we will be making GPs' visits cheaper over the course of our term, particularly given that under... Order. That under the last government, order. That under the last government, GP costs increased by 44 no, per cent. I'm going to give the Prime Minister a chance to answer that in okay. silence after David Bennett has apologised for interjecting straight after I called for order. Apologise. I, I do want to remind members that to interject after call for order is in itself disorderly and will be treated as such. The Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, as I said, the reason that we're addressing the cost of GP visits is because they went up under the last government by 44 per cent. When will $10, uh, there be a $10 decrease in the cost of visiting GPs for New Zealand families? Uh, Mr Speaker, he'll of course have to wait for our announcements on Budget Day to see what we're doing to make sure that primary health care is more accessible than it was under that government. And what I can guarantee is that New Zealanders will be better off not only for their doctor's visits under this government, but in general with the health system, which was run down by the National Party. Is one of the... Oh. Speaker? A point of order of the sorry to interrupt the flow of questions. Um, sorry. Sorry to interrupt the flow of questions, but during that last answer, uh, the Honourable Nick Smith made a remark that is unparliamentary, and I ask you to ask him to withdraw and apologise. Did the Honourable Dr Nick Smith make an unparliamentary comment? Uh, Mr Speaker, I certainly referred to the broken promise of the Labour Party. And, and, and I am seeking from the Honourable Dr Nick Smith, and I will listen to the tapes, as I do in these cases, an assurance that he did not make an unparliamentary oh, Mr Speaker, I'm happy to withdraw and apologise so the House can get on with its business. But Order. No doubt the member will promise. resume his seat. He will stand, withdraw and apologise for making an unparliamentary comment and add nothing to it. I withdraw and apologise. Right, where were we? Yes, Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is one of the reasons for the, ten, the doubt about the $10 reduction because the government's chosen to prioritise a whole host of other things, including $2.8 billion in student-free fees that don't deliver any more students? Mr Speaker, uh, no. Uh, what we have had to do is make sure that we can address the fact that DHBs have had a six-fold increase in their deficit from September to date. Over a $190 million deficit. We've got hospitals that are not fit for purpose, and we've got health workers working in unsafe environments. This is a government that has a plan to address all of it, and we're committed to doing that over three years. Well, can the Prime Minister confirm that in the last couple of months government coffers are half a billion up, and why doesn't she use that to do the $10 for, uh, cheaper fees reduction? Speaker, as I just, as I just outlined, we've had a six-fold increase in the DHB's deficit. Creative accounting, creative accounting from the National Party has demonstrated that while things were bad when we came in, we didn't realise they would be as bad as what we have found. Middlemore was just the tip of the iceberg. Will serious crime, which under present law would warrant a prison sentence, reduce if bail laws were to be loosened? Uh, Mr Speaker, what we're trying to address at the moment is the last government's solution to what was a static crime rate, a static crime rate was to build prisons every three to five years. No one in New Zealand thinks that's a good answer. Does she believe substantial irrigation can be undertaken in an environmentally sustainable manner? Uh, Mr Speaker, if they're environmentally sustainable and stand on their own commercial two feet, then they can find their own way to be implemented. Oh, it's, it's a no. Why does her government consider PPP-type funding acceptable for some Crown investments, but not all of them? 
Mr Speaker, for the ones that we have ruled out, there have been blatant examples of failure. Do, do, I, do I need to mention Serco and Mount Eden? Who is the kind of government? Supplementary question, the right honourable Winston uh, Can the Prime Minister tell us how much extra did she need to find for the four lane highway promised between Puhoi and Whangarei by the previous government? Mr Speaker, I could speak to many such examples, but obviously that last government was not interested in funding was not interested in funding the investment required for transport because uh, the Leader of the Opposition's first significant speech was all about what he wouldn't do and not what he would do to solve New Zealand's problems. David Seymour. Why is the government honouring existing irrigation contracts? Good idea. Because it was in the agreement and their contracts. Why is that different with partnership schools? Oh, Mr. Speaker, we are given partnership schools. We've given partnership schools an option, and the majority of them look to be taking it up. Is this her kind of government that breaks promises to New Zealand families in relation to doctors' fees? Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, the member is yet to see what we're actually doing for doctors' fees yet, and we'll see, and we'll see what we've got planned on the 17th of May. But I can also add that New Zealanders already know, based on our mini-budget, that 380,000 families will be $75 a week better off from the 1st of July. That's more than they saw from that government in their entire nine years combined. Question number two, Willow Jean Prime. A point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brown. Uh, Mr. Speaker.